All right, everyone. Hope you're doing well. I know I am, and I'm pretty sure you are too, because I know we're all England, and we are in the semi-final of the Euros. What a time this is. I want to talk about it a little bit. I want to capture this moment, because this is special. I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section, and I want to let you know what I'm feeling, because I genuinely think we're going to be talking about this moment, this time, and hopefully this next week for years and years to come. And I'll be honest, I, I, I was confident coming into this tournament, but even I am absolutely inspired by what's going on. This group of players, what a group of lads. I'm not just talking about their footballing ability. I'm talking about how they represent our country. The pride that I think we all feel right now, because we all know there's been so many years of hurt, so many failures, so many dismal results, dismal performances. And to see what these lads are doing is so refreshing at the minute. And I'll be honest, the, uh, the Ukraine game, I was nervous. Despite what we've already done in this tournament, going into it, number one, we were playing away from home. Myself and thousands of others who would have loved to have been there, we couldn't be there. And that always makes you a bit more nervous, I think, when, you, when you've got to watch it on a screen instead of being there. That's when I get the jitters. And then number two, obviously being a Blues fan, these are the moments where you think you've done the hard work and you usually slip up. So to come out and do what we did, be on the front foot, be clinical, again, be completely solid at the back, to have every single player on that pitch put in the performance that they did, I was proud watching it. And you can go up and down the names. I mean, individually, some great performances. Luke Shaw is a revelation. He's looking like Zidane. Uh, Harry Kane is, is looking like Harry Kane again. Declan Rice is, uh, is an absolute animal. Raheem Sterling, has there been a better England player in the last 30 years? Because he is incredible. And considering a lot of us, myself included, I'll put my hands up, were thinking that Sterling shouldn't start for that opening game against Croatia after the season that he'd had to do what he's doing. And again, he's just striking so much fear into the opposition. And this takes me on to what I really want to get to, which I think is ultimately the story of this team. Gareth Southgate, the manager. What he's done with this group of players, who, yeah, they're, they're a brilliant group of players. We've got a lot of talent in that squad. But what he's done in terms of bringing them together, nurturing them, getting the best out of them as individuals, and getting them to play as a unit, regardless of who's in that starting eleven, has been so impressive. And it's interesting because there's been a lot of criticism over recent years, especially the past few weeks about Southgate and his football, about his selections. People wanted Sancho. People are desperate for Grealish. And Southgate sticks to his guns because he knows the players best and he knows what he's after. And he's got a game plan and it's working. And I think we can all see what the game plan is. It's to protect the defence, to be robust, resolute, not concede, because teams who win tournaments don't concede many goals. We've always said goals win games, clean sheets win tournaments. So we don't throw caution to the wind and just stick every attacking player out there. Because God knows we've got loads of them, but you can't play them all. And what he's done so well is he's kept the players who aren't playing onside. Clearly all the indications are that the team spirit is incredible. They're all rooting for each other. There's players there like Sancho. He's barely played. He's played five minutes. And somehow Southgate has kept him mentally engaged. He's been patient and then he's taken his chance. He was, he was really good against Ukraine. And it would have been easy for him to, to lose it. Because, again, people were shocked when Saka started ahead of him. But it worked. It seems like every one of those players in that squad is into this. He hasn't lost any of them. So it's a credit to him and it's a credit to them as well. Young group of lads... They're into this as much as we are as fans and it's so refreshing because there's been times gone by where you get the sense that maybe these players who are playing for England don't see it as that much of an honour. So big, big respect to Southgate. You know, there's been so many people having a go at him. So many people, if you go on Facebook, saying Southgate out over recent weeks. So many people saying, what's, what's he doing still playing Kane? What's he doing picking Declan Rice for England? Everything he does, people question it. 
And when you have a game like we did against Scotland, where absolutely it was poor, Scotland came to get that brilliant nil-nil win, that life-defining moment for them. And I think our players just looked a bit stuck in the mud. But if it's a one-off, we can all accept that. You're not going to go through a tournament without a bad game. I mean, there's teams that have won tournaments that have had several of them. And that gets back to something I've always said. I've said it on videos before. We will win a tournament at some point in our lifetime because it doesn't take that much. It takes togetherness, talent, a good manager, the look of the draw, the rub of the green, and suddenly you're in a final. All we've got to do now is beat Denmark. And we're there. And again, you think of all the dross that's been served up over the years. You think of Euro 2016, where we lost to Iceland. I was there, believe me, it was a disaster. But those days are long gone now, and it's come at a perfect moment because after everything that's happened over the last 18 months, to see our country come together, because there's no doubt about it, we are. To see the scenes, whether it's in the stadium, in the pubs, in the uh, box park. We've all seen the scenes on social media. It's, it's special. And I love sports so much. And sports can sometimes reach a level where something really special happens. Where it's about so much more than what's going on on the pitch. It's bonding a nation. It's, it's, it's given us memories that we will all carry with us for the rest of our lives and we'll pass on through generations. And it's just awe-inspiring to see because we needed it for so long. It's, it's almost been unfashionable to be proud of our country. And it's a great country and there's so much to be proud of. But for ages, and especially it seems in the last 18 months, we've had people that want to make us feel guilty for being English and with the divisive forces that are out there at the moment, that they don't want us to get along. They want us to focus on what's different between us. They want us to hate each other, to throw all that nonsense out the window and just have happiness and a shared experience of joy. It's, it makes me so proud. It makes me so happy to see so many people so together. And it shows you what is right about this country. This could be a moment where people realise, yeah, there's so much to be happy and proud about. Let's embrace it. Let's just embrace being English. For so long, England football fans, who are some of the most passionate, dedicated, not to mention friendly, welcoming people I've ever come across. For so long, they've been labelled as, as, quite frankly, scum by a lot of our media. For so long, it's been assumed that if you follow England, then you're probably a far-right lunatic. Now, those of us who have ever been to a game, we know that's absolute nonsense. But again, the nonsense has prevailed for a long time and it's time to just get it out the window. Forget that stuff. Forget this talk of division and hatred in our country because there's so much togetherness right now and there's so much pride in what we're achieving. And I hope that we can just do what we need to do against Denmark and get to that final. Because I really don't think that football has seen anything like a potential England final at Wembley for a long, long time. And like I say, I was there against Germany. A lot of you will have seen my video. Appreciate you watching it. Some of you even were part of the video. It was just such a special occasion. And that video of Sweet Caroline, it's been watched by 200,000 people. And these are people all over the world who are just engrossed with England fandom, amazed by our support. I know people all over America, from New York to Nashville, from LA to Miami, who are saying, wow, that's a bit special. I had had a bowler bloke the other day call me up and say, hang on, I'm watching a video here of some girl out in Texas who's doing a reaction video to your Sweet Caroline video. And I said, bloody hell. This is after the game, I assume. <laughs> I've had people say, hang on, what am I seeing? This looks like a happy, joyful, welcoming, multicultural bunch of people. I'd heard that you were all racists. 
well, there you go. The narratives aren't always reflective of the truth. And those of us who have been to England games, who are members of the travel club, we know the score. And I can only tell it how I see it. These often are good people. And some of them, they, they rely on football, both club and country, to, to get them through life, to be honest with you. People go through so many things. People experience tragedies and they turn to football as an escape. And it's so powerful and it, it just goes to show how much it means to people. So let's hope we can put more smiles on these people's faces. Let's hope the journey continues. Denmark, what can I tell you about them? Not much, to be honest. I think we've just got to do our job. And we've got the players to do it. We've got Pickford, who is a rock for England. We've got Harry Maguire, who I think is, is our best defender since Rio Ferdinand. We've got two strong players in Rice and Phillips, who will protect that back four. And then we've got those attacking players that we talk about. Any one of them could do the business. So let's see. Let me know your predictions. Let me know if you're going to be there. I'll do a video and I think it's got the potential to be a good one. Enjoy it, everyone. Keep right on.